Hello geometers, um, Ms. Cohen here. I am here to talk to you about these videos. Um, normally I'm not in them and I'm not upside down, but I wanted to um, talk to you briefly today about how to make the most of these videos and sorry about the upside down thing. So um, number one, you always wanna make sure that when you watch the video, you're listening to the sound because without listening to the sound, you're only getting about 20% of the information. So that's really, really important. Um, also, you want to have, uh, if possible with you, colored pencils or pens, highlighters, pencils, and always a straight edge. And my favorite straight edge is a protractor because we need protractors anyway, and then you don't have to have both a protractor and a ruler. So um, that's just a little bit about um, how to get the most out of the videos. Also, oh, this is really important. The best thing about having these videos instead of taking notes in class is that you can pause whenever you want to and rewind and so I encourage you to do that a lot so if I'm writing an example down and you don't get it all down just pause and the screenshot will stay up there and you can copy it down so now <clears throat> away from me upside down we're gonna look at my lovely composition notebook and uh, we set them up yesterday those of you who had them and I wanna just show you first the title page. So in class together, we did lesson 1.1a, basic vocabulary, and I started mine on page five. You can see that I've numbered just the, um, the odd pages here up to about 21, and I'll go farther if I need to. Um, today's lesson is 1.1b. So go ahead and fill this out on your table of contents. And it's gonna be the distance formula, and I'm gonna abbreviate here, distance formula, and the midpoint formula. And I'll be starting mine on page seven, but just check to see um, where your next blank page is before you begin. I'm using these markers, and so I'm only writing on the front of my pages because it bleeds through, but you should feel free to use the front and the back. So I'm gonna turn now to page seven. And I've already set up my notes. So what, um, there's a bit to copy down here. We're always going to write the date and the lesson and the essential question. And that's really important because at the end of the lesson, you're going to write your summary and you have to answer the essential question. So you need to know what it was. And then um, we'll always make this line here so that we can write our key points and questions. And these contain all the examples we're going to be doing in class today. So um, it's going to take you a while to copy this down. It's really critical that you get these points exactly in the right spot. So point B, for example, is at negative three, four. So you've got to get them all in the right spot or your notes won't make any sense. So please pause the video right now and go ahead and get all this down in your notes. And then when you're ready, press play. Okay, welcome back. Um, we are going to start with E, F. So the first thing we're going to do is find um, the length of E, F. So we're going to just write here example one, find the length of EF. And this is not a difficult question. Um, when we're talking about length in geometry, sometimes we're talking about units like centimeters or inches, but in this case we don't have that information and so we're not going to be getting our rulers out. That's not the idea here. We are going to be using um, units. So considering each square on the graph is one unit long. So to go from E to F, it falls right along one of the grid lines, and so all I have to do is count. I start here, that's my starting place, so that's like zero, and I just count. One, two, three, four. So the length of E, F is just four units. So obviously nothing challenging there. Um, let's talk about the midpoint of E, F. We'll define midpoint in just a minute, um, but I want you to just in your head think like, what, what is a midpoint? What might that be? And obviously, if you kind of break this down, mid, middle, point. So the midpoint, we should say the midpoint of EF is the very center of that line segment. And again, because this line segment follows a grid line, it's pretty easy for me to do. I can kind of just, here I've got two pens, I'll start at the ends and I'll just work my way to the middle. So I go one in, boom, one in, boom, my pens meet and so that has to be the midpoint. Sometimes 
you'll meet in the middle of a square and that's fine too. But in this case, we don't. We just go boom, boom. And so that, let me use a different color. That is the midpoint. Right there. So let's label that midpoint. And that's sensible. We know that our line segment is four units long, and so it makes sense that the midpoint would be two units away from each end point. So there's the midpoint. Um, a couple of little things. We want to mark on here that that is the exact middle, especially if we don't have grid lines and our image is not drawn to scale, we need to mark it. And the way we do that is we put little tick marks on each half. So we put tick marks there, tick marks there. So there's our midpoint of the F. Um, let's do another one. I'm going to need more space. So we're going to do example two. Um, let's work on the length of AB. So here's AB. And it's really tempting to want to try to count this somehow, to go one, two. But this is one unit. This is one unit. This is not, it's, it's not a unit at all because it doesn't fall along a grid line. And so to find the length of this, um, we have to do a bit of work and we're gonna use something called the distance formula. So somewhere on your paper, I need you to uh, find a good spot to write the distance formula. It looks really complicated, but we're going to break it down. It's really not that bad. So the distance equals the square root of y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared. So that's the distance formula. Take a minute to copy that down. And then let's talk about what this means. Um, by the way, you should know that the x's and the y's are interchangeable here. Like you could just swap them and that would be fine. Um, but this y2 minus y1 means take the y values of your points and subtract them. So basically you're finding the difference in height between the two points. So for a, b, the y value of b is four and the y value of a is five. So if we subtract them, we get one and that's the vertical distance between the points. And then here we're doing the same thing, only x has to do with left and right movements, and so we're finding the distance left and right between the two points. So let's go ahead and use this formula with um, this line segment, AB. The first thing we need to write down is the coordinates of each point. Just as a reminder, the x coordinate is left, right, the y coordinate is up, down. So for point A, the x-coordinate is negative 5 and the y-coordinate is positive 5. Take a minute and write down the coordinates of B and then come back and check with me. B, the x-coordinate is negative 3 and the y-coordinate is 4. So what I like to do, because we have all these like y2, x2, y1, it gets really confusing. Let's talk about how to label these points. And um, you'll probably remember doing this last year with the slope formula. I'm going to call this point 1 and this point 2, though it doesn't matter. Um, each point has an x and a y. So x, y, x, y. And since I'm calling this point 1, those get little 1s. And since I'm calling this point 2, those get little 2s. Now I have all my points labeled, and all I have to do is plug into this formula. So I'm going to do that. The distance equals the square root of parentheses y2. So I look over here, y2 is 4. So I'm going to put the 4, and I'm going to put the minus. The minus is required. You have to put it. It's part of the formula. y1, I look over here. There's y1, 5. Close the parentheses, put the squared, bring down the plus, more parentheses. Now, x2, look through here, boom, negative 3. My minus is required. x1, negative 5. Squared. 
And you should be uncomfortable with this because we don't like seeing two negatives in a row like that. And so whenever I see that, I do TikTok or keep change switch. Basically, minus a negative is the same thing as plus a positive. So I'll swap that. And from here on out, I just have to simplify. So the distance equals the square root of 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So we're just simplifying what's in parentheses first. Negative 3 plus 5 is 2. And you can obviously use your calculator for this if you need to. And then I'm, I'll keep going. The distance equals the square root of negative 1 times itself is 1. 2 times itself is 4. So the distance equals the square root of 5. I wasn't prepared with my calculator. You guys go ahead and type that in on your calculator and see what you get. So I don't have my scientific calculator with me, so I'm using my graphing calculator here. Square root of 5 is about 2.236. We'll round here to the nearest hundredth spot, so 23. I look next door, that's a six, which means I round that up to 24. So it's about 2.24 units. And we never could have just guessed that on our own. We really needed the distance formula here to find that length. So the length of that segment, AB, way up here, is about 2.24 units. And we needed the distance formula to do that. So let's go ahead now and uh, find the midpoint of that segment of AB. And we can pretty much tell where it's gonna be. In fact, it's always a good idea to estimate and make predictions. It really looks like the midpoint is about right there. But I'm gonna teach you a formula because sometimes it's not practical to guess and you need to know exactly how. So our distance formula is here. I'm gonna just circle it. And <laughs> My notes are a bit messy here. There's example one, and I'm going to write the midpoint formula right here. Midpoint formula is pretty simple. What we're doing here is we are figuring out what's halfway between the x's, what's halfway between the y's. And so to do that, our midpoint, our answer is a point x value, y value. To find the x value of the midpoint, you add up both x's, x1 and x2, and you divide by 2. We're basically finding the average of the x's. And then we do the same thing with the y's. We add up the y's, we divide by 2. That is the midpoint formula. It's actually really simple. So let's find the midpoint of line segment AB. We already have our x1, y1, x2, y2s here, so all I need to do is plug those into this formula. So I'm going to do x1 plus x2, so that's going to be negative 5 plus negative 3, and then divide the answer by 2. And then for the y's, I'm going to do exactly the same thing, y1 plus y2 and divide my answer in two. Now, I will tell you that one of the ways that people really mess this up is when they type this into their calculator. So let me show you what I mean. Um, negative five plus negative three. If we have negative five and then we add negative three to that, it's negative eight. My son is running around. <laughs> That's who's feet you here. Okay. So negative five plus negative three is negative eight. And if we cut that in half, negative eight cut in half is negative four. So that's what we should get. But if I type this into my calculator and I'm not careful about it, watch. Negative 5 plus negative 3 divided by 2. That's not what I get. And the reason that's not what I get is that your calculator is going to do order of operations. It's going to do this division first because division comes before addition. So if you want to type it into your calculator, you have two options. You can do that in parentheses and then divide by 2 and then we get negative 4, or you could do negative 5 plus negative 3, hit enter, and then divide your answer by 2 to get negative 4. So negative 4 is the x value. For the y value, I'll do it on my calculator just to practice one more time. Actually, you guys pause the video, 
Do it on your calculator and then um, write the midpoint in, okay? Okay, welcome back. 4.5. And what I want to do right now is plot that point way back up on my graph and see if it makes any sense. So coming way back up here, negative 4, comma, 4.5. If I come to my graph, negative 4 and 4.5. 1, 2, 3, 4.5. Boom, that's right where we thought it would be. That's the midpoint. I'm going to mark it up by putting hash marks on both sides. That just says that this piece is congruent or equal in length to this piece. So that really is the whole lesson today. Um, we needed distance formula and midpoint formula. Here's the distance formula. Here's the midpoint formula. We need to practice this a lot more for sure. Uh, before we do that, I want to mark up your notes a little bit. So on the left where we have our key points, um, we have our distance formula. So I'm just going to write that over here. Distance formula. And then down here we have the midpoint formula. All right, distance formula, midpoint formula. And I want to do uh, another example. So we're going to do example three. I want us to find the length and the midpoint of, I'm sure you guessed it, line segment CD. So length of CD. First step is to write down the coordinates of C and the coordinates of D. So for C, looking way back up here, we have negative 3, negative 2. And for D, we have 5, 4. All right, there we go. So. Let's write down our formula. It seems like a waste, but it's so important to write the formula down every time. It'll help you not screw up. So distance formula equals square root of y2 minus y1 quantity squared plus x2 minus x1 quantity squared. I'm going to go through and label my points. Each point has an x, y, x, y. This is my first point. This is my second point. And what I would like for you to do right now is to pause the video. And I want you to complete the distance formula here. I want you to find the length of that segment using the distance formula and then um, come back and check with me to see if you did it right. Okay, that's what I got. I did it kind of fast. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. But I think the length of that segment is just 10 units. Oops, we should have written 10 units. So if you did not get that, I need you to go back and see if you can figure out where you messed up. And then um, let's find the midpoint as well. And again, what I would like for you to do, the midpoint formula is up here. I would really like for you to try it on your own. If you don't practice it on your own, you're not going to get good at it. So practice it on your own and then come back and check and see if you got it right. All right, I got 1, 1 as my midpoint. 
So what I would like to do before I move on is just go back to my picture and look and see where that is and make sure it makes sense. So 1, 1, coming back up to my picture, 1, 1 is right here, 1, 1. And just kind of eyeball it and see if that looks right, and it does to me. And then again, I want to mark that these two sides are congruent. So you'll notice that here I have two tick marks and here I have one tick mark. I have to use a different number of tick marks each time because this piece isn't equal to that piece. So if I had put two tick marks here, it would mean that this section was the same length as that section and it's not. So here I'm going to use three tick marks, one, two, three, one, two, three, to show that that's the midpoint. And we're done with all of our examples. Um, this is a lot that I crammed onto one page. I'm hoping that you have a little bit of room at the bottom. I don't, so I'm going to have to turn it over and do my summary on the back. Now I'll use page nine. So I'm going to write my summary over here. So you will not get full credit for your notes if you haven't done the summary. I know it's a pain, um, but it's important because it's how you can make sure that you're not just copying down what I'm saying, but you're actually thinking through it and understanding it. So looking back at our essential question, how do you find the length of a segment and its midpoint? So to begin, I would say to find the length of a segment and then I would probably say something like you use the distance formula and then I would write down the distance formula again the more you write it down the more comfortable you'll become with it and then if you want to you can explain the steps involved um, and then same thing with how to find the midpoint so that's it uh, for today please make sure you have all these notes down please make sure you understand it really well before you come to class tomorrow